Throughout history, man has had a fundamental desire to trade. But there's always been this constant dynamic tension with the middleman. How much value does he bring? Is he worth the cost? Markets and finance underpin our modern world. But today's financial services industry is still predicated on exploiting information scarcity and limited access to expensive infrastructure. At the dawn of an age of information abundance, the halcyon days of the financial industry as we know it are over. As the banking landscape shuddered in the global financial crisis of 2008, mainstream economists, business leaders and politicians competed to explain the failures. But it was clear their goal was to preserve the status quo. The gatekeepers jealously guarded their position, seeking to remain indispensable. They rejected the economics of information abundance, even as technology systematically laid bare the obsolescence of their business model, built on the premise of scarcity. As the new technologies fall into the hands of every man, the tide of social and economic change is beginning to surge. The 16th century invention of Gutenberg's printing press was revolutionary. Suddenly, vernacular translations of the Latin Bible were widely distributed. The spiritual smokescreen which kept congregations dependent on the church was removed. Seemingly overnight, it unleashed knowledge and power to the people, rendering the traditional role of the high priests and cardinals obsolete. No longer did man need a broker between themselves and God. The late 20th century invention of the microprocessor was equally revolutionary. The incredible democratization of information has created the conditions for a fundamental change in the relationship between mankind, his leaders and institutions. The cardinals of 20th century finance are just as vulnerable to a new order. One in which technology enables people to navigate complexity and engage with the financial world on their own terms. A new generation of digitally native intermediaries is emerging and with this will come a new economy, new systems to store and exchange value, a system immune to the corrosive effects of monetary debasement, artificial scarcity and over-centralization. A system that is too small, too simple and too distributed to fail. A system where complexity is simultaneously hidden away while being harnessed to create value for its users. The global financial crisis of 2008 was just a prelude, a violent tremor heralding two decades of wrenching change. It marked the beginning of the financial reformation that set to turn the old order on its head and lay the foundations for a new paradigm of user-centric finance, networked, distributed, intelligent. Even though many saw it coming, our leaders and institutions didn't. They were overwhelmed. How long before they realize there is no going back? Change is inevitable.